YouTube, Air of Carthage here, and you know what? I guess it's 2v2 Tuesday. That's right. Well, it may not be just Tuesday, but I've got some good 2v2s for you now. This took place in a tournament that was hosted by uh, Turin, who's a great YouTuber. If you haven't seen his channel, I would imagine most of you have, but you should go check it out. I'll try and link it in the description. Um, he hosted this 2v2 tournament, and our very own Halo and Wicked from the community discord and also they're always here in the the chat and stuff whenever we have live streams um they joined and wanted to play and i'm gonna show you how they did in the tournament um and let's take a look at their first match up here they're gonna be greenskins and norska and they're gonna be taking on a high elves chaos build so let's let's check out the build that they brought the rule here is very interesting there's only one rule which is 6200 funds per player um, so that's the only rule. Other than that, you can do whatever you want. But it basically means that by the time you add the funds for the two players together, it equals the same funding for a large funds battle. If I remember right, I think it is 12,400. Um, which is kind of an interesting thing because it means the players are going to have to pick smart. And you're going to definitely be making a choice between quantity and giant monstrous units or high quality units. Um, and certain units that may not be particularly powerful might become different because of the funds level. So I think that it's a very interesting pick by Turin um, to set up a 6200 funds tournament here just to create a different feel. Now the front line is going to be Night Goblins for the Greenskins and then the second line of Nasty Skulkers. These guys have a special ability which is a... Um, I, I think they call it the Smoke Bomb? Yeah, it's a Smoke Bomb and it drops the speed of an enemy and can really cause havoc and it's a nice pick I think because they're also armor piercing. Gives you a little bit of safety in case you come up against a line of Chaos Warriors. Uh, there's a Night Gobbo Shaman on I either flank, and you'll see that their spell is Vindictive Glare. Now, you all remember the video I did about the little green Luminarch? Yeah, and here we've got a Goblin Great Shaman. These guys are going to be sucking up a considerable amount of Winds of Magic and preventing the enemy from replenishing a lot of Winds of Magic, because that's what Gobbo Shamans are good at. And uh, Vindictive Glare is a nasty spell, and it hurts. I'm going to pause it just real quick so you can see the Chaos Army before we get into the fighting, which is about to start. For Chaos, you got Kolek Sun Eater, um, some Marauders as an infantry line. You've got a Sorcerer Lore of Fire here. Not a bad pick against two relatively unarmored factions. You've got a Dragon Ogre Shagoth supporting Kolek. And then for the rest of the army, there are three Spears here for the High Elves, and then all of their remaining funds have been poured into Ilariel the Radiant on an Eagle and a Star Dragon. So a considerable amount of funds for the High Elves wrapped up in these two potentially devastating units. Ilariel for support, the Star Dragon for extreme damage. And for the Norskins, um, you're going to have some Marauders in the back, a Metal Shaman Sorcerer here with, I believe that's Plague of Rust. Yeah, it is, Plague of Rust. Um, two of them. So definitely hoping to pull down armor, potentially. They're going to combine with Wolfric, um, who's just here on foot. Yeah, so we got Wolfric on foot. Interesting. There are some Gobbo uh, archers here, the Rusty Errors as well. And then there's two Feral Mammoths. A couple more Gobbo archers on the flanks. Anyway, that's the armies. Let's check out how this plays out. The battle is going to get started fast and furious here as Kolek and Team Chaos just come blazing in, wanting to throw their weight around. There's that Vindictive Glare, and it is going to hurt bad, and immediately Kolek loses about 40% of his health. He could not have seen the Night Goblin Shamans. Now a Fireball is hurled back and just about KOs one of the Night Goblin Shamans, but he'll be hidden soon if he can stay far enough out of sight. That was a brutal Fireball. Works very good against low armor units. You're going to see the Star Dragon being brought in immediately to try and cause terror routes, and it delivers. The Shagoths could potentially do the same thing. Kolek is going to get some much needed help from Ilario. Is the Star hitting him? It is. So he's managed to get in there. Yeah, he needed the help there from Ilario badly because Kolek is taking an absolute shellacking. Now the Rusty Air is in there. And Ilariel is trying to come in and shut it down, but Kolek gets routed. The two feral mammoths just coming in, and even though they're not anti-large, dealing lots of armor-piercing damage. Look at this, Ilariel. Ooh, I guess the spell canceled. She just about got lit up. 
She's going to come in after this Gabo uh, Shaman. Not a bad idea, but here comes a Vindictive Blair. Just misses her. So she gets out of there pretty well, all things considered. Another Vindictive Blair? Yes, and she takes a hit off of it. So the Goblin three, the goblin Trio here causing a lot of havoc. You're going to see the, uh, Shaman, or the Chaos Sorcerer of Fire coming in after the Gabo Shaman now, and the Gabo Great Shaman combining with the standard Gabo and some infantry trying to pin down Alariel, and they're getting some work done. She's got a Plague of Rush. She has zero armor right now. She's going to flee. The Feral Mammoths have cleaned up the enemy infantry, and the Dragon Ogre Shagoth is... I mean, yeah, sure, it's better in a 1v1 matchup, but with two of them plus the infantry around, the Shagoth's really not going to do so great there. It's not going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time against the Mammoth because of the infantry around, whereas the Mammoth does really good in the enemy infantry, and so it kind of comes out the victor there, especially since Kolek took such a beating early on in this match. And he did take a beating. He might have gotten killed somewhere, too. I wasn't wasn't able to see that. It didn't really catch Kolek in the end. The Star Dragon is still in good health. And here comes the Shagoth. They're going to try and pin down Wolfric back here, see if they can get some damage done. And there is Vindictive Blair still just rolling in from different parts of the battlefield. And it has caused tremendous damage. Vindictive Glare is, in all honesty, probably too strong for the magic cost that you get out of it. I think the magic cost is, if it's going to be okay, then you probably just have to reduce the damage a bit. And if it's going to cause the damage it does, you probably have to increase the magic cost. One of the two. But, I, you know, again... I, it can get abused easy, so it's definitely something that I would think about. But as far as the pick here, it's a smart pick because if your enemy sells out on monsters, Vindictive Glare allows you to have cheap infantry, cheap support heroes, and basically little miniature Luminarchs. And that's exactly what worked here. And so from a pick standpoint, it was extremely clever. And it was a basically a, a gamble against the fact that the enemy might just bring a whole crap load of really armored infantry. And for instance here, if Chaos had just foregone the Shagoths and brought a whole bunch of the 700 cost shielded armored Chaos Warriors, this could have been a tough fight as long as they had a way to deal with the Mammoths. The Mammoths were going to be tough to deal with. But the High Elves could have attributed that, right? Maybe Chaos provides the shielded infantry line while the High Elves provide a huge number of the standard archers, which can cause tremendous damage from long range, especially against two factions where you don't expect a lot of armor. So again, I think it's a clever pick by uh, Halo and Wicked in the sense that they took the gamble and said, hey, if these guys sell out with large units, we're going to be able to answer. And indeed they did. And they kind of had their bases covered a little bit in the fact that they picked the mammoths, which gives them the anti-infantry um, capability there too. So. Again, I like the pick. I think it gives them some flexibility both ways. Let's uh, end that replay, and I'll kind of show you what I was thinking for the pick from Rightist. And I and I'm I don't know. I maybe I'm can play as good as these guys in the game. Maybe I can't. So I'm just giving some thoughts on my end. Whether or not it's right is a different story. But I will give you my thoughts. These are the guys playing in the tournament, not me. So I'm I'm armchair generaling right now. But let me go give you my thoughts. Um, so, for instance, Norska and Greenskins at 6,200 funds, almost certainly you're going to be coming up against a lot of low armor stuff, right? So, just from a pick standpoint, I can imagine that High Elves might want to look something, you know, I, I don't disagree with the pick of Alario. I think it's a very smart pick, but, you know, do you need her on the Eagle? Do you decide to take it a different way? I mean, Alario on an Eagle still, I mean, it gives her mobility, but... You could gain the mobility elsewhere. Again, 6,200 funds. Um, so how do you want to play that? I mean, I know you're going to want Earth Blood. Maybe you want, like, a, an Arcane Unforging, something like that. Uh, from a, from an item standpoint, I think you definitely want the Star of Avalorn. And, eh, you know, if you want the Ward Save, but you can get away fairly cheap there. Watch this. Again, 6,200 funds. So let's go to Settings. And Funds Custom. Let's set it to 6,200. I'll give you all a bit of a demonstration here, what you can come up with. Remember, there were no rules. 980 range, or sorry, 165 range archers. 
No rules, other than 6200. And now, flip the coin here, and this is, this is again, this is probably what I would have wanted to choose. Would it have worked? You know, maybe, maybe not. Depends on what your opponent chooses in this case. But let's go Warriors of Chaos. Let's think about a pick here. Sigvald. Usually not a good pick, but at this funds level, let's think about it. I can take all this stuff off, and he's pretty cheap. Then I can come here, and now he regenerates. This guy's not going to be an easy kill. He's got a silver shield, 15% resistance. He's going to replenish. He's immune to psychology. He's going to get knocked around if you attack him with anything big. And now watch. So, is it likely that the Greenskins and Norskins are going to have a huge armor-piercing knockout, especially when you have the protection of those archers? Uh, five, six armored warriors you can get up there? Or do you cut that back a little, keep it at just four, and then spread in some marauders? I mean, you can probably finagle this a bit, um, but I mean, look at there. Eight infantry with shields, four of them which are heavily armored. Protected by nine archers. Yeah, I don't know. Could be hard to protect that many archers, so maybe you cut back and bring a few spears. But again, I think you all get where I'm going. Now, if Norska brings mammoths, they get owned. I say that. I don't know. The mammoths could punch through really quick and get to the archers, so there's a risk for it. But you see what I'm, I'm going at here. Would it work? Don't know, but just give me some ideas on how you run that. Because when, you, when, you, when they went all in, could the star dragon have worked? Sure it could because it can cause terror, it causes tremendous damage, but it also became a liability in the end of that match. It just wasn't able to do as much damage as it needed to. Those two mammoths, that's really what they needed an answer to, was the two mammoths. And yeah, you got two dragon ogres, but it's hard for them to answer when you got three goblin archers and three gobos spitting vindictive glares at those things. It gets, gets pretty ugly pretty quick. Anyway, great pick by Halo and Wicked. That's a tough one. You come up against that. Like I said, I think the only way you win that one is if you've really gone heavy on infantry. Um, and then the risk is, did you still bring the right units to take care of the mammoths? And again, I think that's why it's a tricky pick, because it could get tough regardless. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage signing out for now. Make sure and leave your comments. Tell me what you thought about the battles. I thought they did a great job from both teams. It was fun to watch, and I'll have more for you. Signing out, I will see you soon.